Hi everybody and welcome to your Everyday Math Unit 6 5th grade study guide review. So this is the second version of the study guide. You will be doing one version um, with me during our Zoom lesson if you're in my class. Otherwise, this is a review worksheet that you can use to help you study and get ready for the math test. So I will be writing different notes on here. So if I write a note, make sure that you write it down because it can help you on your test. All right. So number one, it says multiply 6.4, so 6 and 4 tenths, times 10 to the first. Now, we did learn a trick. When you multiply by powers of 10, your decimal moves to the right. When you divide by powers of 10, your decimal moves to the left. So I am multiplying by 10 to the first power, which means my decimal will move to the right one spot. So 6 and 4 tenths times 10 to the first is the same as 64. I want you to use this trick to help you and see if you can answer number 1b. This will be 1b. 6.4 times 10 to the second. All right, I am multiplying. Again, I use that exponent to help me. I'm going to move that decimal two spaces to the right. One, two. So my decimal would be here. We know that if there's an empty space, we put a zero. So my answer would be 640. I want you to try letter C on your own. What is 6 and 4 tenths times 10 to the third? Your answer should be 6,400. The way that I know that is because I move my decimal three spaces to the right. One, two, three. There you go. That's what you would do. Here we go. Number two says, where did you place your decimal point in problem 1C and how did you know to place it there? So I'm going to give you a really good way to answer this question. Okay, I'm going to help you with this one. And then you can use this wording to help you answer the next one. So the way I would do this is I would look at it as two different questions. So the first question is, where did you place the decimal? And the next part was, how did you know to place it there? So listen to what I do. I know that if you multiply by powers of 10, your decimal moves to the right. The same number of spaces as your exponent. So 6.4 times 10 to the third, move the decimal three times. 6400. Zero, zero. That's what I would write. I told you where I moved it. I told you my final answer. And I told you why I moved it that many spaces. I told you that when I multiply, I move my decimal to the right. I also told you I moved it three times because of my exponent here. And I told you the final answer. Now, pay attention because if you look at the answers that are in the square, they might be the only things that change for number four. Big hint. All right, let's look at number three. Number three, we're going to divide. And just like before, when I said I multiply, 
I move it to the right, divide, I move it to the left. I'm putting my note down there to help me and remind me again. So when I divide, my decimal goes to the left. All right, let's do the first one. 10 to the first. That means it goes one space to the left. 1.43. I want you to try the next one on your own. What is 14 and 3 tenths divided by 10 to the second? My decimal will need to move two spaces to the left because my exponent is two. One, two. The way I write that number is 0 0.143. So zero and 143 thousandths. All right, I want you to do the last one on your own. So that's A, that's B, and that's C. So do 3C on your own. What is 14.3 divided by 10 to the third? If I move that decimal three spaces, we have one, two, three. We also know that if I have an empty space, I put a zero in that empty space. So 0 0.0143. That would be your answer for 3C. Now, number four. Where did you place your decimal point in the answer 3B? So I'm looking at this one right here. And how did you know to place it there? I want you to see if you can use this, what we wrote in number two, to help you answer number four. By the way, when you're taking the test, you need to give very detailed descriptions and reasons. Don't say, I moved the decimal. That will be wrong. I moved it two spots. Can you hear me? That will be wrong. You need to be very clear. Did you move it to the right or the left? Is it bigger or smaller? So again, use what we did for number two, and I want you to type out your answer on number four. All right, here we go. So where did you place your decimal point in the answer to problem 3B? How did you know to place it there? Watch, magic. I know that if you divide by powers of 10, your decimal moves to the left the same number of spaces as your exponent. 14.3 divided by 10 to the second. Move the decimal two spaces or two times. My answer is 0 0.143. Hmm, let me flip this real quick so you can really see. What do you notice about number two and number four? All right, when I'm looking at number two and number four, I see the word multiply, turn to divide. I go to the right when I multiply, left when I divide. My exponent is a three. Yeah. My exponent is a two. So I said I moved to the right three times and I moved to the left two times. Besides that, it's pretty much word yeah. for word. Pretty much tells you exactly the same thing. It tells you which way I moved, how many spaces, and why I knew to do that. This is a perfect answer. All right, we're going to go ahead and look at number five. Now, 
Remember, at the top of my page, sometimes I write different things to help me out. So I told you on the last page that you can write multiply to the right, divide goes to the left, right? This page, I'm converting between meters and kilometers, and I know that that's the metric system. So I know that that's going to be my hint with King Henry died by drinking chocolate milk. Now, it says that I'm going between meters and kilometers. So if I have 4,000 meters, I'm going to write 4,000 meters. You see how I wrote the number 4,000? And my decimal is right by the meters. How many kilometers is that? Four. Nope. What did I do to this number? I moved my decimal. Hmm. Which way did I move my decimal? Hmm. Which way did I move my decimal? I moved it to the left, which means I'm going to divide. Now, it says to write the rule using a power of 10 exponential notation. So don't tell me you divided by a million. Don't tell me you divided by 100. That is not a power of 10. What did we divide by? All right, knowing I moved to the left, it looks like I moved to the left three spaces. So based on my page before, I know that means it's the power of three. So I'm dividing by 10 to the third power. That is what you would write for that question. All right, I know that this is super simple. So I, need, I know that my decimal will start out right here on each of these numbers. Okay, I know that I'm going to go this way if my number starts there. So I moved three sections, turns into four. One, two, three. That's how we got 8.2. Can you hear me now? One, two, three. So 0. Zero. 0.940. I want you to try the next one on your own. If I have 62 meters, how many kilometers is that? All right, you are going to move that decimal to the left three spaces. One, two, three. So 0 0.062. That is your answer. My next one is already done for me. Let's try this last one. Now, notice this way I was going smaller. This time it's the opposite. This time my decimal will move to the right three spaces. So how many meters for 7.5 kilometers? All right, I'm going to show you, yes, you can move the decimal, but I'm going to show you using the, car, the, the chart. King Henry died by drinking chocolate milk. 7.5 kilometers. Okay, so in order to write that, I would do 7.5 because this is kilometers. My decimal is right after the kilometers, correct? And I need to get all the way to meters. So if I move my decimal here, because that's my base, that means I have two empty spaces. So my answer, if I move my decimal three times, one, two, three, or if I use my chart, my answer should be 7,500. That's how you do it. All right. Jackson. Little Jackson. I'm sorry, little Jack. Jack is putting down flooring in his bathroom. And when he's putting down that flooring, he has a sheet of flooring that is 3.8 kilometers long. He cuts off nine meters from the end to make it fit. How long is one piece of flooring that is the piece of flooring that Jack puts in his bathroom? So the first thing I notice is I have kilometers and I have meters. 
which means I'm going to have to change one of them. Look at we just, look, we just did for five kilometers, meters. It helps us. All right. So for me, I'm going to change things to meters first. I'm going to take these kilometers. So 3.8 kilometers equals how many meters? Just like we did before, kilometers to meters. 3.8 kilometers equals how many meters? Going from kilometers to meters, my answer is going to get larger. So here we go. We're going to go 3.8, 1, 2, 3. So 3,800 meters is what that stands for. Now, it says, how long is the piece of flooring that, Jack's put, that Jack puts in the bathroom? Well, he cuts off nine meters. So I have to subtract that. It doesn't say he adds nine meters to it. So I'm going to do 3,800 minus nine equals blank. So let's talk about the steps that we took so far for this problem. So step one, convert. Make them both meters or centimeters or kilometers, whatever it is. Make them both the same. Step two, you're going to add or subtract. If it's multiplying or dividing, you need to do that as well. But this one's basically adding and subtracting. So let's do our subtraction. 10 minus 1 is 1, 9, 7, 3. 3,791. Now, the last thing you need to make sure that you do is put a label. This is one of the most important things that you can do for your answer. You must put a label. So right now we converted everything to meters. So that's what we're going to write, meters. This is important because if I just have 3,791 and I don't say what it is, if I had this many kilometers, that's a lot. This many meters, a very different amount. A lot smaller, right? So that's why you have to have a label. You have to tell me what you're measuring with. Okay. All right, number seven. Use an estimate to place the decimal point in each product. Here we go. So 63.4 times 2.3 equals this number. Now I need to find my estimate. So let's see, 7A. What estimate could we use for 7A? All right, for this one, I am going to use 70 times 2 equals 140. I think that's a pretty close estimate because 63 is close to 70, 2.3 close to 2. So my answer should be right around 140. So where are we going to put our decimal? All right, for this question, I would put it right between the 5 and the 8. 145 is really close to 140. That's how I know where to put it. Let's try B. 2.17 times 14.6 equals 31682. What is your estimate for this problem? Where would you put your decimal? All right, so off to the side, I'm going to write my estimate. I did 2 times about 15. 14.6 is close to 15. I know that 2 times 15 is 30. So I'm going to put my decimal right between the 1 and the 6. 31.682 is really close to 30. Right? So it says, explain how you solved problem 7B. So I'm looking at these questions right here. Incomplete sentences. 
I want you to try to write incomplete sentences. Tell me every step. How did you solve problem 7b? All right. I'm going to go very slowly to make sure that I go through all of the steps. So the first thing I had to do was make an estimate, right? I estimated 2.17 is close to 2. 14.6 is close to 15. I multiplied 2 times 15 equals 30. I put the decimal between the 1 and the 6 because that makes my answer 31.682. This is close to 30. That's what I would do for that question. All right, I want you to pause the video and I'm actually gonna have a pause for you. I want you to write this down. All right, so hopefully you have this written down. As far as wording is concerned, excuse me, when it comes time to actually doing it on the test, I do want words and I want sentences very similar to what I have here. I want you to be able to really tell me your whole process. Don't tell me I estimated. Don't tell me I put it between the one and the six. I need to know what you estimated and why you put it where you did. Okay? You need to give me details. All right. Here we go. Now for some fun parts. So I know that this is a long video. If you need to take a break, go ahead and do so. We have about, um, we have, let's see, it looks like 15 total problems and we're on number nine. We're about halfway through. Let's try to get the rest of this done today. This is going to be the only part of your lesson today. It's going to be this. Um, so make sure you are trying your best to get it done. All right. Um, if you need to break, go ahead and pause. Come back when you're ready. It will start you back, but it must be done before you take your test. All right. Number nine and ten. Do not use a calculator. I want to see that you know the multiplication process. All right, so here we go. Number nine. I'm gonna show you my way first because I like the my little trick way that I have. All right, and then we'll go from there. So looking at this number, I see my decimal is moved two times, one on the top and one on the bottom. So I write that off to the side, remember? Eight times two is 16, carry my one. Eight times five is 40, plus one is 41, carry my four. Eight times one is eight, plus four is 12. My X's and the uh oh, uh oh, oh's, they haunt me. Five times two is 10, carry my one. <coughs> five times five is 25, plus one is 26, carry my two. And five times one is five, plus two is seven. Add those together. All right, six plus nothing, one plus nothing, two plus six, and one plus seven. I will move my decimal two spaces. Now, this was tricky for some of you. It was, and that's okay. You're going to start with your decimal to the right, 
and you're going to go two spaces. One, two. So your final answer for this one would be 88.16. Now, some of you like to use the estimates. If I multiply 5 times 15, my answer is 75. Is this really close to 75? Yep. All right. This one I'm going to do the estimate way. So this is my little trick way. That's the way that I like the best. I'm going to do this one the estimate way. I'm going to actually do it the estimate way with my um, and the other way. So I'm going to start by doing the estimate way first. So my estimate, 51.2 is close to 50. 28.3 is close to 30. So my answer is going to be about 1,500. About 1,500. Okay. Now let's do the math. 3 times 2. 3 times 1. 3 times 5. My X's and the oh, 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 they haunt me. 8 times 2. 8 times 1 plus 1. 8 times 5. My X's and the oh, 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 they haunt me. 2 times 2. 2 times 1. And 2 times 5. Add them up. What is my answer with? a decimal all right six plus nothing three plus six five plus four plus nine eighteen carry my one two plus one plus one four plus nothing and one plus nothing now i said my answer should be close to fifteen hundred that's close to one close to fourteen Close to 144, 1,448. Oh, yeah. That's really close to 1,500. That's how we do it. Now, let's double check. Let's use my method. All right. I looked at my decimal has moved twice here, right? So if I start my decimal here, same answer. Same answer. All right, let's see how detailed you can be. Explain how you solved problem nine in complete sentences. Here we go. I multiplied 152 times eight. And 152 times 50. I added the products. The reason why I said that is because this is times 8, because it's in that column there. And technically, that would be times 50. Remember, that's why we bring our O, X's and O's. So that's how I got that. Okay, that's why I said I multiplied it by 8 and by 50. Okay, and then I told you I added my products, which means I added these two answers, which I did. Right? Finally, I moved my decimal two spaces to the left. Uh, because that is how many decimal spaces I started with. Now, if you want to tell me I moved it two spaces to the left because that made it close to my estimate, great. I would accept this answer, and I also would accept something that said you made it close to the estimate. Okay. All right. Division. We're going to start by making estimates and then 
solving. So it says make an estimate. Divide as if the dividend were a whole number and use your estimate to place a decimal point. All right, 6.42 divided by 4. Now notice that this problem and this problem are not the same. They should be. They should be. So we're actually... Hold that thought. Hold that thought. We're actually going to change this to be a 2. 6.42 divided by 2 makes it a little easier. All right. So my estimate 6.42, I'm going to say is close to 6. Dividing it by 2, uh, dividing it by 2. 6 divided by 2 is 3. Now you're going to do the actual estimate. So 6.42 divided by 2. I want you to do the division, and I want you to see if you can find my answer with a decimal. All right, two goes into six three times. Two times three is six, zero, bring down my four. Two goes into four times two. Uh, two goes into four two times. Two times two is four, zero, bring down that two. 2 goes into 2 one time. 2 times 2, 1 is 2. 0 left over. Now, I need to put my decimal. Doing it the way that I do it, I can just bring it on up. Because I'm dividing by a whole number. Also, if I use my estimate, 3.21 is really close to 3. Your answer for this one would be 3.21. Awesome. All right, number 13, it says write an equivalent problem that has a whole number divisor and then solve the equivalent problem and complete the number sentence. Basically, what this is telling you is to find the divisor and make it into a whole number. So 0 0.7, I need to move my decimal one space to the right. And if I do it there, I need to do it on the other number too. So in my video, I showed you a way to do this. I showed you that if I write my numbers here, 4.2 divided by 0 0.7, I move my decimal one spot here, and I move it one spot here. If you do that, then that makes it so much easier to divide. So now, what does this say? Well, it says 42 divided by 7. 42 divided by 7, I can make an estimate, but I also really just know that answer. I know that the answer is going to be 6. Right? Now I can divide it out. 7 goes into 42 6 times with 0 left over. So your answer for this one would be be six. Now, somebody's going to say, Miss Gilman, that's not right. You're dividing and it's bigger than my first number. Yeah. Because you're dividing by a number smaller than one. That's why it's bigger. Okay. So this is the correct answer. On these problems, my biggest trick and the biggest thing that I want to share with you is make sure that you know your division and multiplication facts. Make sure that you go slow. And make sure that you really pay attention to what is it is asking you. Notice that this one says make an estimate, which we did. And this one says write an equivalent problem. That means that this doesn't say 40 divided by 7. This is my equivalent problem. Okay. It actually is the same numbers, just with the decimals moved. So really pay attention to what you need to do to these numbers to get it to work for you. Okay. 
All right, we have two more questions left, guys. And I know that this is a long video. I get it. I understand that it is super long, but this is just it. I would rather do one video, get the lesson completely done and put together, and you can pause and study and go back as you need. That way you have to look at one place for it. All right, here we go. Number 14. A rectangle one-story house covers an area of 1,900 square feet. Okay. The ceilings are four feet high. That is a very short house. <laughs> what is the volume of the interior house. Okay, so here is my house. Ish. Now, remember when we're doing area, or I'm sorry, volume, you have two options. You can do base times height, or you can do length times width times height. Now, it says that the base, I'm sorry, the, the one story covers an area of 1,900 square feet. So your area that it's talking about is that bottom layer. So that is basically your length and your width. It's already multiplied. That's your base. So for this one, you're going to use base times height. What is my number model? I just gave you a giant hint. Base times height means we're going to do 1,900 times 4 equals V for volume because it wants to know the volume of the interior. Now we're going to do the math. Times 4. What is the volume in cubic feet? of the house. Here we go. Zero, zero, 36, carry my three, four, five, six, seven. 7,600 cubic feet. All right, that's for layer number one. That's for the first story. Now, this is a multi-step problem because it has more information for you to do. It says that the owner decided that he wanted to add a second floor to the house. The second floor, okay, so first floor is here. The second floor, I'm going to do kind of the same kind of picture. Okay. It is 60 feet long, 40 feet wide, and the ceilings are 9 feet tall. Okay, so what is the volume of the second floor? Start by writing your number model. What is your number model? Remember what formula you need to use. My number model will be 60 times 40 times 9 equals V. The way that I did that is I have my length, my width, and my height. And now I'm going to multiply. Go ahead and multiply these numbers together and find your total volume. All right, 60 times 40. 6 times 4 is 24, and I add two zeros. Then I'm going to multiply that by 9. Here we go. 0, 0, 6, 18, 19, 20, 21. So 21,600. All right. What is the total volume of the interior house? What you're going to do is you're now going to write the number model and answer. I need your final answer. Don't forget your label. What is the total volume of the entire house? All right, to find this problem, I am going to add the first floor plus the second floor. Um, that second floor is a lot bigger than that first floor. Hmm. So 7,600 plus 21,600 equals volume for the whole house. Here we go. 7,600. Add those together. 
12, carry my one, six, eight, nine, 29,200 cubic feet. It's a big house. <laughs> That's a big house. Can you imagine having a four, four foot tall bottom half of your house and the second half of your house is nine feet tall? It's craziness. Craziness. All right. These are probably my favorite kinds of problems just because I feel like it's so easy to do. So the first thing is we're going to read it. It says Makita, I'm sorry, Makita, Maida or Maida is making bracelets for 10 friends. Each friend told her how long they would like their bracelet to be. Maida recorded those links below. So bracelet links in inches. So here are all my links. Okay. Complete the line plot using uh, Malta's, evidently her name changed, Malta's data. <laughs> Remember to add a title and a label. So I start easy. What is my title? Uh, bracelet length. What's my label? See how easy that is? Inches. Now, the good thing is it already labeled it and numbered it for us, which is great. But now I have to put the pieces on the number line. All right, eight and a half. Mark it out. Nine and one fourth. All right, so that would be right here. Mark it out. I'm going to pause the video. I want you to go ahead and finish filling out the chart on your own. And then when you come back, I want you to check and make sure it matches mine. All right. This is what my chart looks like. I hope that yours matches. All right. I should start right here. My, my smallest one will be seven and one fourth. My largest one will be right here at nine and three fourths. That is how you're going to do your chart. Make sure it matches completely, please. What is the most common length? of the bracelets that she made. In other ones, which one happened most often? One, 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 two, one, 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 one. This one was most often. So eight and one half happened more than any other one. All right, what is the combined length of the five longest bracelets. Whew. All right. This is going to be tricky. I need to figure this out. So what are my longest bracelets? Okay. So we have nine and three fourths plus nine and one half plus nine and one fourth. That's what that is. All right. Plus eight and three fourths. And then one of these eight and one half. That is my total. So I want you to pause the video. I'm going to pause it right now. And I want you to figure out the math. I want you to add these numbers up. What is the combined total length of the five longest bracelets? All right, let's see if you're right. Here we go. I have nine, 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 eight, eight. Those are my whole numbers. And then I'm going to do my fractions. I'm going to do a little tricky way over here. I'm just checking my work here. So I have three fourths plus one half plus one fourth plus three fourths plus one half. Now I wrote it this way on purpose. I wrote it this way on purpose because I know that four fourths makes a whole, right? So I know if I take this right here, three-fourths plus one-fourth, that equals one whole. One-half plus one-half, that equals one whole. So the fraction I'm left over with is three-fourths. Now let's add 9, 18, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35. 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45. So 45 
and three fourths inches. That should have been your answer. If it wasn't, I bet you just made a small addition error. This is where you just have to be very careful and meticulous about making sure that you draw a picture to help you or do something else that will help you. Double check your math. All right. And finally, it says, what is the difference between the longest and the shortest? All right, so my longest is nine and three fourths. My shortest is seven and one fourth. And it says to find the difference. So I'm going to subtract. What is the difference between nine and three fourths minus seven and one fourth inches? Nine and three fourths, seven and one fourth, subtract. Three fourths minus one fourth is two fourths, also one half. Nine minus seven is two. So your answer should have been either two and two fourths or two and one half. Either of those would have been the right answer. All right, guys, I know that this is a lot, and I'm going to stop for just a second. Hang on. I know that this was very, very long, and I know that you guys had a lot of information in the study guide. I give a lot of extra hints and notes, and it took right at 45 minutes, 46 minutes to go through the entire study guide. That's about how long it should take you, at least, when it's time for the test. I'm doing this as an Ed Puzzle because I want you to be able to treat this as if it was almost a test. Do the study guide. Try your best. Use the notes that I gave you in class. And then see how you think you might do on this test. Take it serious. Try. The more you try, the harder you work on this study guide and the better notes you take, the better you're going to do on your final assessment. So I just hope that you realize how important this is. I want to say thank you for really paying attention while we're doing this lesson. I want you to write one thing that you want me to know about this study guide, whether you thought it was easy, hard, um, something about it that you didn't like, something that you wish was different, um, or something that you wish that... I could add next time. I'm always open for suggestions. So write one thing that you wish I could add. Have a great day, guys.